I watched President Trump on television the other night and he breaks me up. A short while later, I watched Prime Minister Trudeau on Canadian television. He made me want to throw up. I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, I look at all this stuff and I think, holy. I mean, back to the midget in the ring with a Hulk Hogan. You got this guy trying to negotiate with the president of America. Say, it's, we need help. We being Canadians, someone come and help us. I could even do that. If somebody would give me a buzz, I'd be happy to go to Washington and fix this mess. I mean, can't be that tough. It's kind of what I do. I do 500 deals a year. And I'd love to make this the 501st to fix Canada sitting down with the president. Hey, prime mistake, buzz me, please. Okay, my phone doesn't ring, I'll know it's you. Chris Garnier, Garnier, he strangled, this is in Canada, he recently strangled an officer, a police person, dead, killed her, put the body in the compost bin, dumped her under a bridge, okay, and now he's been receiving treatment from a private psychologist under the Veteran Affairs Benefits Program, and he's a convicted cop killer who never served our country and is getting his PTSD treatment paid for. And there are so many veterans that are fighting the liberals constantly for theirs. Yeah, again, socialism, it just doesn't add up. It, it doesn't. I mean, dumb, 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 and, and dumb is forever. And these liberals, they, they really, it's upsetting to see what they do to one's nation. And that would be my nation that they're messing up. The Canadian military now, it's saying they're going to severely restrict uh, the use of uh, marijuana once it becomes legal to the troops in Canada. Well, thank goodness. I, I mean, I'm sorry that you feel that you have to tell me that because you shouldn't. That should go without saying. It's, it's a substance. It's kind of like alcohol. I hope they don't drink beer and whiskey all day when they're out there fooling around with their guns and stuff. So, I mean, again, it's good policy, but things like that I kind of think don't need to be said because we assume that they're already in place. The Liberal government now on uh, November 7th, that's actually now behind us, a few days, they uh, officially apologize. I have apology fatigue with the Canadian government. They now apologize again with regard to the 1939 decision to turn away a ship from Canada carrying German Jews fleeing the Nazi regime, right? Uh, and the prime mistake says this. This was an absolute moral failure on the part of the government. We get that. I mean, hindsight is good. Do you know how many people have apologized, Mr. Trudeau, for this? A zillion. We're all sorry that somebody else did a bad thing. At the backdrop of their time, though, you need to understand all the facts. He couldn't understand the facts because I'm sure he wouldn't know what books to look in. But there were a lot of reasons. There were other countries that said, if you do that, we're going to do this to you. And there was a whole bunch of statement stuff happening, right? And, and, and again, we look back. It's a terrible tragedy. But it happened. And everybody since you, prime mistake, has said, I'm sorry. And now you're doing it again. And you go on to say that we're committed to do what we can to right this wrong. So I guess you should search out all of their, their people, uh, their children and grandchildren, and give them a check. I, I, Leave it alone. I mean, everyone knows that it was a bad thing, but, but if we're going to start saying we're sorry for every bad thing that someone else did, life ain't long enough to get through a part of the list. Toronto Dominion Bank in Canada. I quit that bank. I had eight bank accounts at various companies, that I, and I quit. The reason I quit is, is because every time I went in, they had big TV screens up. All they talked about was the gay situation in Canada. Gay praise and they had pictures of men holding hands, hugging all the time. And I went to the bank managers, what are you doing? Aha, uh -huh, you're homophobic. And I said, stop it. I already know that, but stop it. <laughs> I'm in a bank. I, I have a group of gun guys. You're going to put our pictures up there? I don't think so. Conservatives, like what other groups? No other groups, just gay people. They paint their buildings. Uh, for, you know, for the gay community. And then the people who aren't part of the gay community, we're supposed to come in and, and applaud, and I guess, I guess hug, find another man and hug him? I don't know what they want, but, but it's very, I find it disturbing. You're, you're catering to this other group. It's such a small percentage. So what does it mean to keep saying embrace them? I get it, we accept them. And that's what the banker lady said to me, you gotta show your support. And I said, why? I don't support the lifestyle. I said, I agree that everybody should be able to do what they want to do. I've said a hundred times, maybe a thousand times, <laughs> but Mary Bill, hey, just don't bring it to my house because I don't care, right? But, but when you put it out there, and, and I'm a customer, I'm here to, to do a money transaction, not to have a political talk with you about homosexuality. Hey, just sharing my views with you, it doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. That's how I feel, and I should be entitled to be able to feel like I want to feel. And I'm entitled to change banks, and I did do that. Hey, y'all come back. See ya.